Hey up, how do? I hope you're all good. My name's Dave Kate, and you are watching the Yorkshire Bike Mechanics YouTube channel. If you're new, then welcome. I hope you enjoy what we do. If you can subscribe, that'd be brilliant. If you're not and you've seen us videos before, then I'm glad you've come back. Uh, but at least we're doing something right. So, today we've got in a poorly uh, wheel. Uh, it's a Hunt XC Wide, uh, and it's showing stress fractures on the spoke calls, I'll show you what I mean. Let's crack on. So here we are. Uh, this is a Hunt um, XC uh, race. Um, it's a mountain bike wheel and it's got a, a micro spline free of body on it uh, for a 12 speed Shimano. It's a really, really light wheel uh, and Hunt are quite popular uh, based in Sussex for building wheels um, and we've worked on hunt wheels before now this one is showing some stress fractures around the spoke holes and I'll put this in the jig and I'll show you what I mean now you can probably see that stress fracture there in this in the still photograph that I've got up on the screen at the minute um, now they're caused by a few different things but one of the main reasons is that at some point the that particular spoke has been overstretched. Now it's either been uh, cased on a jump or uh, the the tensions are far too high or that set of, that spoke. Or it could be that a combination of a few things including uneven spoke tensions um, on wheels. Um, that causes stress fractures around the uh, around the holes, around the spoke holes, and there's quite a few in this wheel. So what we need to do basically is replace this rim. So Hunt have kindly sent us this brand new uh, rim to replace on this particular wheel. It's a like for like uh, rim. It's exactly the same, uh, and it should be stri fairly straightforward to swap this over. <clears throat> I'm going to show you an easier way how to do it. A little bit easier than what you think it might be. Uh, the hard bit is truing it up after. Uh, so we're going to use these existing spokes that's in this wheel and I'm going to show you an easier way how to do it. The first thing that we need to do is undo the tension off these nipples on these spokes. So let's do that first. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start at the valve hole. I'm just going to use this as a reference point where I am in the whole process. So we just need to go and just a couple of turns off of each one now this this is a, a straight pull spoked wheel we're not going to replace the spokes we're going to actually use the existing spokes so we'll just gradually loosen these off a couple of turns on each one just to loosen them off okay don't worry about the creaking and the cracking that's a normal sound that you get when you loosen in spokes okay now what sometimes can happen on particular uh, wheels at a straight pull is the spokes can turn uh, obviously because they've not got the bend at the end so you can find that they'll actually start to turn most of the time they won't though so we're just gradually loosening these off until we get all the way around back to where we were before and when I get round to the other side I'll come back Okay, so I'm back round at this spoke hole and I'm just going to go around again and take another couple of turns off just to gradually take the tension off all these spokes and then once we've done that they should come out a little bit easier. So again, I'll come back to you when I'm round back at the, uh, at the valve hole. So we're now back to the spoke hole and um, all these spokes are now slack as you can see 
Okay, all the way around. We've got a wobbly wheel. Right, Brill. So, which is what we want. So the next thing that we need to do is we need to actually take these nipples off of just four spokes at a time, okay? So, what, but what we need to do, first of all, before we do that, is we need to get a new rim. And we need to, we need to drop it down the left-hand side of this existing wheel. So I'll move the camera around so you can see better. So we need to get this rim down the side of this existing rim, this existing wheel, down here, okay, like that. Okay, and it'll fit nicely down there. Now you can do you can do this at home. You don't need a jig to do this. You, if you just uh, put the put the pair of them in a cardboard box, and you can work from the top as long as you leave leave one side open. Okay, so now that we've got them side by side, we need to find the valve holes. We need to put the valve holes together. Okay, so so they're exactly the same, the same, uh, the same place. And then what we need to do is, the, if we work downwards this way, so the first spoke um, on the damage rim, we're going to move it from that rim over to this hole here. So first of all, we need to take the uh, the nipple off that spoke, and because we've loosened them off, you can generally do it by hand. Okay, it helps if you have a spoke key that's the right size. And generally speaking, when we're doing this, we'll nearly always replace the nipples. So I'm just holding the spoke with my left hand to stop it turning, and I'm just undoing the nipple off the end of the spoke with the right hand. And I just feel it drop off the end there. There, it's gone now, okay. So I'll take that off, there it is. Get some new nipples, some new brass ones. Now nipples you can get like in uh, a di few different flavours. These are actually black 14 mil nipples these, okay. And we use these quite a lot on, on most wheels. Uh, they're a brass, they're a really good nipple. Um, and or you can use a 12 a 12 millimeter nipple which is a little bit shorter but if you can you're always best with a 14 mil so these are black that's in here so we'll just replace them like for like so like i said before we've got these two valve holes lined up as you can see there i hope you can see anyway let's, let's move the camera around slightly okay so we'll find these two there they are okay two valve holes We've undone the tech and the nipple off this spoke, which is there, and we're going to grab hold of it. While we keep them all together in the same in the same uh, place, we'll take the new nipple, nipple, feed it through, and just do a couple of turns on the end. Okay, so that is the first spoke transferred from the existing rim over to the new rim. We don't need to just strip it all down and take all the spokes out, we can actually do it this way, which is an easier way. So then what we need to do is we need to move on to the next spoke, which is the next one down. So again, we'll hold the spoke with his hand, undo the nipple on the end, and gradually what we'll do is we'll, we'll work all the way around the wheel until we meet back at the, uh, at the valve hole. So we're now back to the valve hole and I've just moved the last spoke from there over to the new rim. So that now makes this rim, this old rim, completely detachable from the existing and we can take that out and put it to one side. Right, so we're now at a stage where we've swapped all the spokes over from the old rim to the new rim and if you remember we've done it side by side and that is really the easiest way uh, to swap your rim over without having to take all the spokes out of the hub. Now you can only do it like that if the ERD, the e effective rim diameter of your, of your rim is the same uh, as the one that you're actually taking off. Okay, so it's important that the measurement, the internal measurements from one side of the rim 
to the other side at the longest point, at the widest point, is exactly the same, well, within a millimetre or so, um, of the rim that you're changing to. Now, if it is, then you can generally use the same spokes, providing that they're in good condition and they're not bent or overstretched. Um, so really, that's a good way of, do of doing it without having to strip, strip your wheel down. The hardest bit of this particular process is now, is when we come to actually true it up, okay? So you really, really do need um, a truing jig to be able to do this properly. Um, but we'll quickly whiz through it. I've seen people make truing jigs out of um, angle iron and pieces of wood and stuff. And to be honest, they look quite effective. But because we do this every day, we couldn't do it without the proper uh, wheel truing jigs. So, um, but we'll crack on and we'll kind of do it bit by bit and I'll show you how it's done. So I've moved the camera down so you can actually see each individual spoke. Uh, like I said before, these are straight pull spokes and you can see where each one goes in the rim there. Okay, and this is how we actually swap them over. And when, if you remember, when we put the nipples on, we just screwed them on a couple of times. So that means these are really, really slack all the way around. And you can actually see, if you look carefully, you can see the rest of the thread that is still, obviously, still to be screwed up loads and loads before they start to tighten. And you'll see that on every, every spoke that goes through the rim. Okay, you can just see that there. So when we're truing up a rim, we always start at this particular position, the valve hole, because this is a reference point, And we can usually tell whereabouts we are in this wheel when we're truing up from this particular point. It's a good point to use. Okay, so the first thing that we need to do is we need to turn these nipples till the thread that we can see there is just disappearing, okay? And by doing that means that every nipple is in exactly the same place or give or take a quarter of a turn um, on the uh, on the spoke okay so if we go back to the reference point so the first spoke that we need to look at is this one which is the first one it doesn't matter which way you go you can either go that way or you can go that way but it st must start with this as a reference point so what we're going to do is we're going to pull this spoke up and a lot of times you can actually do this with your hat with your fingers so i'm going to spin this while holding the spoke i'm going to spin this until the thread just starts to disappear okay that's that one done and i'll do the same on the next one i'll do it from underside or you can do it from on top it doesn't matter if you want to use your spoke key you can use your spoke key as long as you get them in exactly the same place onto the next one okay some of these you might not be able to do with your hand. Okay, that's that one. And the aim is to get all the way around to the other side so each nipple is in exactly the same place. And you can usually feel where the thread is with your nail. If you've got a, a fairly long nail like I have, you can usually tell where the, uh, where the thread is because you can, uh, you can feel it with your nail. So I'm gonna go around the whole wheel and I'm going to get each one to the same position and then I'll come back. So we've now come back to us valve hole. Uh, all the thread on each uh, spoke has now disappeared. It's just beginning to start to go into the nipple. So that means that each spoke is exactly the same as the other all the way around. Okay. So the next thing that we need to do is we need to put some more turns on these nipples because obviously as you can see they're still pretty slack so we take a spoke key and we get back to us valve hole I always work this way down I mean you don't have to it's just out of habit for me okay so what I'm going to do is these are quite slack so I'm not going to overdo it and I'm going to put two turns on each spoke and I'm going to go all the way around and just put two turns on each one. OK, 
okay and once I've done that I'll come back so we're now back to the valve hole again and I've been round every spoke and I've put two turns on each one we've still got a long way to go okay it's still fairly slack okay which is all right that's fine the main thing is with truing wheels up is you've not got to go too fast too quick okay a little bit at a time uh, does the trick um, go too far too quick and you'll end up with a wheel all over the place it's a you've got to be really patient uh, and you've got to do a little bit at a time so we've still got loads to go so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go go around and I'm going to put another two turns on each one which will bring us a little bit closer each time steady away I'll come back in a bit so we're back round to the uh, to the valve hole we've put two turns on each one which has meant that with that the each particular spoke should have a very similar amount of tension all the way around now that makes for a better dished wheel we're not after a complete finished article at this time we're just after something better than it was before uh, and if we just steady away a little bit at a time we'll end up with a, a fully tensioned wheel and it'll be properly true and properly dished as well so next thing that we need to do is go back to us uh, as valve hole adjust as gauges there just basically so it's touching and we're just after just getting it a little bit better than what it is now each particular spoke if we if the the runs on the right if we tr if we put more tension on this particular spoke it'll pull the the rim to the right the left hand spokes if we put more tension on the left hand spoke then it will pull it to the left now at this point it's important that if we put more tension on this right hand spoke then we take the, ma the, the same amount of tension off the left hand spoke otherwise we'll end up with a distorted wheel so what I'm trying to do is a look at the where it's actually touching go back to the to the valve hole and I can see that this rim is slightly to the right and it should be over to the left so what I'm going to do is the right hand spoke I'm going to take half a turn off and I'm going to put half a turn on the left hand spoke and I'm going to go around and adjust it carefully until I get it reasonably centre now this section is not bad to be honest it's fairly central so I'll just adjust it slightly so that needs to go over to the left and I'll take the same amount off on the right the same one here needs to go over to the left so I'll take the same amount off on the right this one needs to go over to the left take the same amount off on the right and we need to carry on going all the way around until we get it reasonably central now it's moving over to the left so I need to take tension off this left hand spoke so if you notice I'm not doing massive turns I'm doing quarters and half turns if that I'd not, I'm not after getting it completely central at this point I just want it better than it was okay but also what I'm doing is while I'm turning these spokes I'm also judging by the amount of force that I need to turn this spoke key will give me an indication of how tight these spokes are I don't want them tight at this point but also because these are straight pull spokes I'm having to kind of make sure that they're not turning at the same time because unlike J-Bend where you've got a little bend at the top uh, these are free to turn so I'm just making sure that they're not turning at the same time so I'm just doing half turns quarter turns just to get the just to get the spokes the sorry the rim more or less reasonably central but not exactly right at this point so you might find 
that some spokes feel as though they've got more tension on them than the others for the, because the amount of the force that you're having to turn the key. Not an issue at this point too much. Um, obviously the really slack ones we need to, to, to pay attention to. But you will find that if you've done two turns or a turn on each one, uh, the same on each one, you'll find that the spokes are more or less the same. That one's a little bit slack. I'll just give that an extra turn. Okay. That one needs to... Oh. So, just to, to recap, if you like, the right-hand spokes tightening will pull the rim this side, the right-hand side, and the left-hand spokes putting tension on will take it to the left-hand side, this side. So the combination of, of this, taking the same amount off as what you're putting on each side will make sure that the rim is starting to come true. And as you can see there, as I spin that rim, if you can remember last time, it were actually touching this side. So it is getting, getting uh, more or less, getting a lot better than what it was. So now I'll just reduce the gap slightly till it touches again. Okay. And I'll do exactly the same as what I've just done, but paying a little bit more attention to the bits that are actually rubbing this time. So this needs to go to right. So I'll put more tension on this right hand spoke and take a little bit off of this left. And I'll go like two or three either side. So if this particular part is rubbing more than this bit, if, if you know what I mean, then I'll and I'll spread spread it over three or four spokes, so I'm not putting too much tension on one side because you'll kink. And you can see that's actually getting better. So I'll reduce it a little bit more until it touches. There it goes. And I'll just work on that bit. It needs to come over to right. So I'll just loosen that off a quarter of a turn, if that. So if you notice, I'm not doing massive turns. I'm doing quarters and half turns, if that. I'd not, I'm not after getting it completely central at this point. I just want it better than it was. Okay. But also what I'm doing is, while I'm turning these spokes, I'm also judging by the amount of force that I need to turn this spoke key will give me an indication of how tight these spokes are. I don't want them tight at this point. But also because these are straight pull spokes, I'm having to kind of make sure that they're not turning at the same time because unlike J-Bend where you've got a little bend at the top, uh, these are free to turn. So I'm just making sure that they're not turning at the same time. So I'm just doing half turns, quarter turns, just to get the, just to get the spokes, the, sorry, the rim, more or less reasonably central, but not exactly right at this point. So you might find that some spokes feel as though they've got more tension on them than the others for the, because the amount of the force that you're having to turn the key. Not an issue at this point too much. Um, obviously the really slack ones we need to, to, to pay attention to but you will find that if you've done two turns or a turn on each one uh, the same on each one you'll find that the spokes are more or less the same that one's a little bit slack I'll just give that an extra turn okay that one needs to up so just to to recap if you like the right hand spokes tightening will pull the rim this side, the right hand side, and the left hand spokes putting tension on will take it to the left hand side, this side. So the combination of, of this, taking the same amount off as what you're putting on each side will make sure that the rim is starting to come true. And as you can see there, as I spin that rim, if you can remember last time, it were actually touching this side. So it is getting getting uh, more or less, getting a lot better than what it was. So now I'll just reduce the gap slightly till it touches again. 
okay and I'll do exactly the same as what I've just done but paying a little bit more attention to the bits that are actually rubbing this time so this needs to go to it right so I'll put more tension on this right hand spoke and take a little bit off of this left okay and I'll go like two or three either side so if this particular part is rubbing more than this bit if, if you know what I mean then I'll and I'll spread spread it over three or four spokes so I'm not putting too much tension on one side because you'll kink and you can see that's actually getting better so I'll reduce it a little bit more until it touches there it goes and I'll just work on that bit it needs to come over to right so I'll just loosen that off a quarter of a turn if that and I'll just put a quarter of a turn on the right hand one if that now that's gone and I'll reduce it even more there it is so I'll take a little bit off that one and put a little bit on that one and also the one at the other side just to make it a little bit more even okay a little bit off that one on your left a little bit on your right and on the other side to spread it out over and that one's gone as well okay there's another little one there so I'll a little one there and a point there okay so at this point it's important to de-stress your wheel okay you've got to uh, you've got to de-stress your wheel so because these spokes um, uh, with them being um, straight pull in particular there might be a slight little twist on these spokes that we can't really see so by de-stressing it means that these spokes will settle down in the place where they, where they will rest, if you like, where it's easier for them to go, if that makes sense. So what I'll basically do is, just move that out of the way. So if you can see, I'm just pushing a little bit, not too much force, and if you can hear the creaking, that noise is the spokes settling down into the uh, the spoke holes in the rim so i'll put it back in the jig and because it'll settle down it'll have moved okay so it's important that at this point on a regular basis then you de-stress your wheel it's touching there at right hand side now so i'll take a little bit off at right And put a little bit on left until it disappears okay so what you can see you, hopefully you can see where we're actually aiming for where we're getting to um, we, we, we're getting to a point where this particular rim is reasonably central okay now there's only a millimeter or so between these two points either side okay so this rim is relatively true at this point Obviously, we need to get it get it a lot better than that. We need to get it so uh, there's no gap either side and it's running through all the way through. Now, it would help if you had a spoke gauge because doing it that way uh, gives us a better indication as to where these spokes are from a tension point of view. Now what's important you'll find that each rim manufacturer will, will stay uh, an average or a maximum spoke tension uh, on this particular rim uh, have a go um, if you need to if you've damaged your rim you need to change your rim then do it the way we've done it you know put it side by side if you've not got a jig then put it in a box if you get it to this point where you've got it reasonably reasonably true 
uh, take it to your bike shop like that and 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 they'll finish it off for you or bring it to us and we'll we'll do it for you um it, it, it's um it's a, a brilliant process um and it's a little bit more difficult than i've than i've made out and there's a lot of different variables depending on what you're actually building um there's a there's a, a difference to lacing patterns you can do different lacing patterns depending on what wheel that you're actually building and um and what it's used for uh, you can build a wheel different for a downhill bike as what you can for an xc bike it's a different lacing pattern for a, a road bike with rim brakes as it would be for a um a mountain bike with a, a disc brake so that it's, it's a little bit more complicated than than what i'm making out but it gives you a bit of an idea it gives you a good idea what's involved uh, with actually changing a rim and truing your wheel and that's the, that's the aim of this video is just to give you an idea i hope that's given you a better idea into what's involved uh, with building uh, a wheel or even swapping your rim over if you've damaged your rim uh, and you don't want to take all your wheel to bits. It's fairly easy to do that way, uh, providing that you've uh, that you've got the same rim. You can use a different rim, but there's a lot more to it than that. We need to uh, a few more calculations uh, on spoke length if you want to use a different rim, but it can be done like that. If you want to ask any, any questions, uh, rather just uh, leave a, a comment underneath and I'll try and answer you. Thank you so much for watching. I do appreciate you subscribing uh, and watching it's, they're great to do i love doing these videos um and i'll uh, catch up with you soon total pip